Hello. <sighs> Tired, Chris. None of us are in control. You know this. Don't lie to me. Don't hide from this. We front that we're in control. And like, um, it may seem from the way I present myself on these videos, though I hope not, that I come across as being somehow in control. Like I've solved all my problems. I haven't. Which is why I fixate upon the message that Adam Watts talks about of living with your problems, finding a way to ride with them instead of against them. See, we're selfish. All of us are. And then that's what this natural organism, this body is. You know, and, and that's not bad or good. It just is. Good and bad are things that stories we tell ourselves about the event after it happened. It's not actually in the event itself. It's just a judgment that we add on to the end of it. And, I mean, it's evident. You, if you were in control, right? If you were truly in control of yourself, wouldn't you be happy all the time? Wouldn't you spend all of your time thinking positive thoughts, you know? Wouldn't you spend all your time... If, if you were truly in control, I mean, think about this rationally, right? If you were in control of who you are, what you like and what you do and what you choose and all this kind of stuff, or if your choices had any real efficacy, which is just a posh word of saying power, potency, ability to produce change, then you would choose to be happy all the time. And it would happen like that. You would also choose to like everything. I mean, think about it. Imagine, right, imagine for a second as a thought experiment that you're, you're deciding how you're going to be before you're born. Okay, you're there before you're born, you're not there yet in existence, but through some magic which fiction allows us to do, you're able to plan and organise and design who you will be. And you've got a choice to make, right? What are you going to like and what are you going to dislike? Now then, um, you're going to choose, if you're rational, you're going to choose to like as much stuff as possible you're gonna to choose to be irritated by as few stuff as possible, you know? And ultimately, if you had your way, if you were rational in this endeavor, you would choose to like everything and be irritated by nothing. But alas, look at us. Loud, whiny noises piss me off. I don't like the smell of shit, and I doubt, well, I've tasted it. Some shit's actually okay, but not all of it. But um, I don't like shit. And no matter how hard I try, I can't really get to like it. I haven't really tried that hard of shit. I don't intend to. I don't plan to. But um, we can't get rid of the dislikes. Because in a way, as Alan Watts talks about, they're necessary for the likes. So we're not in control. And we, we often lose control of ourselves and act contrary to how we want or plan to act. And anger does this to us, lust does this to us, uh, extreme desires do this to us. Um, our, our mind just creates this whole mess, this whole conflict, which is where this comes from. But we're not in control. And we all see this. The problem is we don't apply this understanding to other people. We constantly talk to other people as if they are in control. We tell them what to do. <coughs> Despite the fact that we know it doesn't work because it doesn't work on us. Even when we ourselves are telling ourselves what to do, we are not always obedient. Yet we expect others to be obedient. <clears throat> I mean, it's part of the poor little me syndrome, isn't it? Poor little me. I'm not in control. But those fucking bastards are. They're in control. They know what they're doing. They're, they're deciding it. They're responsible. No. We're not. <clears throat> Certain people have different tolerances. Certain people have different preferential structures. 
They're neat. They didn't choose to have any of these things. Some people don't find things annoying that other people do find annoying, and this produces all the different behaviours, you know. Some people are born with a chromosome in the wrong place. Some people get dropped on the head as a baby. Some people have a fucked up genetic structure or a bit of a bad upbringing that creates the shape they are when they're, when they're older. <clears throat> but we need to, to see this. We need to acknowledge it in ourselves express it externally so everybody else can see it voila what i'm trying to do and then act accordingly or rather no you can't force the act again because it's so easy to fall into that trap that rut of speaking as if i'm talking to somebody that's in control i'm not but if we could just focus on how out of control we all are and express that then maybe that could change our behaviour into a behaviour pattern, behavioural pattern that would match the state of affairs, i.e. us not being in control. I mean, let's look at it. When you tell somebody to do something they don't want to do, or when you ask somebody to change, when you try to control somebody, the implicit um, meaning behind that command is you are shit. So because we kind of apply a moralistic, responsible structure to everybody else, apart from us, of course, we never apply it to ourselves, um, we just go around telling each other we're shit. And that makes us feel miserable. And then because of the deterministic kind of way we work, uh, you tell us we're shit, the subconscious believes it, self-esteem goes down, the ability to control oneself decreases as well, because it's all kind of in a paradoxical way linked up with confidence. And so because we apply this responsibility structure to people that are not responsible, they end up behaving in a more intolerable way towards each other. And it's this vicious circle the whole world's trapped in.